my name is Chris Onroa. I'm a data scientist by practice. Uh, I currently work for IBM Bank as a lead data scientist. Uh, I've been working for different organizations for about eight years in different data science positions. So uh, I'm, I also write for Daily Nation as a data journalist and a couple of other things mostly related about data, mentorship, uh, workshops, etc. Well, I got into data by accident at university and uh, I wanted to do games, uh, you know, develop games. Uh, so I ended up taking more mathematical courses uh, and I thought I took an AI course which I thought would make me create better games but then the lecturer was teaching us about data mining and uh, I just got fascinated by what he was showing us like predicting stock prices, predicting loan defaults, uh, insurance fraud so I, I just I just got you know, overwhelmed with it and then started just finding data here and there that I could analyze. So uh, I did that and uh, just straight out of university together with a friend who uh, thought I had some crazy idea and said like, hey, how about we do a startup? So we did, uh, he, you know, I was part of the startup, but then also I used to have crazy stories that I used to tell along the way when we were walking. Then one day he told me like, hey, why don't you write your, you know, your thoughts? And then I was not really into writing, so I just started to start a blog and you know, write. And then I guess over time it just became popular. <laughs> I, I, I mean, you have an interesting way of collecting data uh, that is also very easy to uh, decipher and uh, very palatable. Maybe you mind telling us the process of uh, data collection that Chris Horror uses. <laughs> uh, so, you know, in everything that I do, uh, you know, one other thing I think that was very important to me when I, I was studying uh, data, data mining in the university was that you always have to find information that one people don't know about and two it's useful right a lot of the anything i would read either articles or analysis were either mundane or things that i already know so it doesn't fascinate me or it's something interesting but has no value to people so every time i want to collect data the first thing i think about would the data result in something new would it result in something interesting or something useful in that, in that case, so if I think about, hey, I want to go to collect all uh, discarded receipts, then I realize, hey, no, I've never read a report where there's like a retail analysis about Kenya. So by just collecting that data, I'll have something new. And by t doing some analysis on it, then people know like, hey, you know, I could, you know, build my business around understanding how consumer patterns are. So those two things drive, you know, my, I'd call it methodology for collecting data. So let's talk a little bit about blockchain and crypto. Uh, can you give us uh, some insights into the space, your opinions uh, based on your data? Yes, so for blockchain, uh, you know, if you take away the application on cryptocurrency, there has been, from an implementation perspective, very low uptake of blockchain. There has been a lot of promises. It could be used for, you know, uh, pr uh, ledger, ledgers for land purchases and, you know, voting and other systems that need trust or trust needs to be confirmed. So there has been a lot of promises, uh, but there has been very few uh, systems that have come to production and wide adoption for that. So it's, it's uh, although, you know, blockchain is about 10 years old, right? So there's still promises, but uh, I'd say nothing yet to, you know, blow everything up as uh, you know, commonly said. So when you come to crypto, you know, crypto is an interesting thing, right? Uh, you know, there has been thoughts about like, can it replace a currency in a country? The answer is no. For one problem, because people are speculating on the currencies. If you wake up in the morning, you know, if your crypto is worth 100 shilling, and by the time you're getting to uh, the Matatu, it's worth 200 shillings, you're better off keeping that money other than using it. So people started using cryptocurrency as a store of value, as opposed to you know, a medium of exchange for that. So that it's called it as being a, uh, a proper store of, I mean, uh, medium of exchange for that. You need a stable currency for, for that. And so, you know, like, you know, uh, uh, a lot of currency came up. Some of them, you know, went bust. Bitcoin now. I don't know, it's like 4,000. I can't remember the last time I checked from about 20,000. So the value has dropped. Uh, so, you know, even from a banking perspective, crypto is not an attractive asset, right? Apart from speculative purposes, it's not an attractive asset to, uh, to have. You, if you hold more of it, the next two weeks it loses value, you know, that's loss for the, for the bank. So you, you, you want to go in, uh, you know, make your money like a trader within a few, every few days and then walk out. That's, you know, you just see 
crypto as gold or you know any other commodity that you could uh, trade central bank of kenya has actually issued the same uh, that you know current cryptos are not stable currency should not invest in them you should not keep them so uh and all over the world there could be some use some legitimate use for it yeah and also remember that it also you know fueled a lot of the under underworld dark web transactions because it's untraceable or at least there's some form of anonymity in it so it makes it hard for the police and other agencies to track that so a government will probably not endorse uh, cryptocurrency for that uh, case so i see crypto slowing down my prediction i could be wrong i see it slowing down for blockchain i think there's yet someone to get it and have a home run with it could be a large corporation that already has a product they can just lay a blockchain on it so I'm, I'm watching a space to look at who is going to take it and have a home run with it yeah um final thoughts maybe uh where the financial space is going in terms of uh data analysis uh, what we can expect that we don't see now in the near future maybe so, so a lot of the work that what is in the financial world is internal right it's interfacing so the bank wants to understand the customer better they want to predict uh, you know uh, churning customers they want to better price loans right those some of those don't necessarily trickle down into the customer some of it does so a lot of that visibility is not there right because right now data analysis ai machine learning is going into improving efficiencies that's what it's going to do what needs ought to happen next is to have ai to be used for creating new products can you uh, analyze purchase behavior say like hey we need a new product for this type of customers that's where the next step like oh no this product was built squarely based on ai uh, uh, recommendation but i think for the local market i think we're still a bit far away from that so i think just expect more efficiencies uh, that could be going to the into, into business better pricing for for, for, for loans getting better you know loan uh, uh, i mean uh, how much money you can get from a, from a bank so those are, there are small benefits but i think that are useful for such markets in, uh, in in kenya i don't think we should start thinking about self driving cars flying robots uh, i don't know cryptocurrencies or you know kind of kind of stuff our market does not support that. we're not yet ready to support that uh, yet so i'd say uh, let's do more efficiencies first and then uh, worry about uh, the future later. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Cheers.